Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to Northern Zen Yoga. My name is Sandra and today we're going to be doing some very lovely, some very gentle yoga. Our yoga class will be about 40, 45 minutes and after that, if you have questions or any comments you'd like to make, you can just add them into the chat window and I'll be happy to answer them and also, too, I want to just mention a couple of things before we start that, and I always forget to do these things, even in the videos that I put out. If you haven't already subscribed to Northern Zen Yoga, please hit subscribe, and you will be notified if there are any further live classes coming up or any of the other little short videos or longer videos that I put out onto the channel. And I try to keep uh, adding things in there uh, at least a couple of times a month, if not more. Um, a little bit less uh, consistent now that I have my um, Zoom classes going, so I've got a lot of stuff going on throughout the week, but I try my best to make sure that I get some stuff onto the channel that's new and, and something that is of interest to you, help you with your yoga journey. Now, having mentioned, um, I have Zoom classes for those of you that really enjoy the live experience. It's through a membership on my website northernzenyoga.com and also even if you think well I don't really want to be doing live classes because of the timing of it is not good with my timing there's a whole library of previous classes that I record and I upload onto the site that members can go and watch anytime they like the other benefit is that just recently we had a yin yoga workshop and that's included in your membership and it's not expensive it's $50 for three months, which works out to roughly about uh, just under $17 a month for uh, three, at minimum, three live classes a week on Zoom and all of the videos that you can watch in a week. So it's good value. Anyway, if you have um, joined me, please just check in, give me your first name if you like, and where you are in the world, and I'll say hi back to you. So right now, we're going to be just giving a few more minutes. We're just looking at the time. Um, I'm going to give a few more minutes for people to check in because of uh, the fact that this is live and that they may have their time is just slightly off of the 10 o'clock time that I have. So we'll give them a few minutes to check in and join us. So in case you're doing this for the first time and you haven't done a class with me before, this is going to be a very gentle stretch today. And I'm going to show you wherever I can how to modify it for your body. Because one of the things that we, the most important thing that we listen to in yoga is ourselves and our body and how it is feeling about what the instructor is asking it to do. So it's really important and you need to promise yourself and me that you will listen to your body. You won't do anything that puts you in pain. Now, having said that, pain is not the achy, stretchy feeling that we get when we're moving our muscles and we're putting them just a little bit outside of their comfort zone. What I'm talking about is something that is sharp, sudden, and you can point to it. You can say, oh my gosh, it hurts right here when I do that. That you want to avoid. So try the modifications I suggest. Move your body around a little bit, even if I'm not suggesting it, just to see if a different position of the legs or the knees or the hips are going to help you to feel more comfortable. When we first start yoga, and we're generally in a very stiff condition, everything is going to feel uncomfortable, that's for sure. And over time, it'll start to relax and you'll start to, your joints will start to open up and move around a little more freely. And then you can start to worry about trying to look like all the yoga pictures that you see out there, or even look like I can, the position I can get into. Now, I have been doing yoga for nine years. I started actually quite late. I started just before, it was in December, I did a few classes in November, but it was actually not until December that I started going on a regular basis, a couple of times a week or more, to a yoga class. So when I first got into yoga, I couldn't even get up off the floor without using a chair or the wall or something or someone to help get me back up again. 
was a little overweight at that time too, which didn't help. But doing yoga helped me to get my body moving again, even at 58 years old. So now I'm 66 years old. And even though I can't do all the fancy things that some of the younger women doing that you might see on some of the other channels, the important thing is that my body is now moving very freely. I have very few aches and pains anymore. Things that I thought were arthritis were really just tight, stiff joints that weren't moving properly. So keep that in mind. When you start yoga, you may not look like you think you're supposed to look or be able to do exactly what you think you're supposed to do. But if you keep with it, over time, your body will thank you for it and it will start to move freely and you'll start to look more like how you expect to. So hi, Jerry. Jerry's here uh, joining us. There's also Joan and Lisa and um, Helen and Connie so far have signed in. And I'm sorry if I miss anybody, but I don't have my glasses on, so I'm just trying to look at the little tiny, teeny print on my computer. The other thing I'd like you to do is, if you are enjoying this class and you'd like to see more classes like this, to hit the like button. Whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching it on um, a recording afterwards, because after this class is done, if you really enjoyed it, it will be uploaded to the videos that are available on YouTube and you can rewatch it again whenever you want to. So if you like this, hit like, and then I'll make sure that I bring you more live classes. So we're gonna start, I'm just looking at the time now, and I think we should start. So let's come on to our bottoms, and I like to sit up on a cushion. And if you have a blanket or a low cushion that you can sit on, it will help to lift your hips up just a little higher up off the floor. And then that way you'll find that your, your knees will relax out a little easier. So here I am, I'm sitting in easy pose. Now you may not be able to get into a position that looks like this. So keep in mind that easy pose is just a cross-legged position. And you can have your legs extended out with your ankles crossed. If even crossing your ankles is a bit of a challenge, you can just have your your feet touching each other. And the whole idea about the knees is just to try to allow them to relax out to the sides. If you find that that is a lot of pressure in your hip joint, you can take a couple more pillows and you can shove them underneath your thighs to help give you a little bit of support. But anything from here to here to here, when I first started in yoga, this was my easy pose. This is what I look like. So you can see that over time and persistence on my part, I've got myself into a much more um, uh, pose that looks a lot more like what you see when you see a yoga person sitting in easy pose. So once you're in your easy pose, whatever that looks like for you, let's sit up nice and straight. Relax your shoulders down. And let your shoulder blades kind of push back toward each other a little bit, opening up your chest. Your hands can be on your lap, they can be on your thighs. Just rest them wherever feels comfortable. And let's just close our eyes for a few moments. Or if you don't want to close your eyes, just let them get soft. And begin to focus on the fact that you're breathing. We're not going to control that breath yet. We're just going to breathe in and breathe out the way we normally do. And just feel the breath moving in and out of our body. Breathing in and breathing out. And now we're going to start to focus a little bit more on that breath. And try to breathe in and out through your nose as much as you can, even if it's not what you're habitually used to doing. And we're gonna take an inhale and we're gonna inhale and we're gonna push our belly out. So on the inhale, push your belly out. Building up the bottom of the lungs and on the exhale, push your belly back in, push it out through the nose. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Keep those breaths going nice and slow, nice and even, 
at your own speed. You don't have to breathe as fast or as slow as I am. Just go what you normally would go and try to really push your belly out as you inhale. And what happens is, is when we push the belly out on the inhale, we drop the diaphragm down and we allow the air to come down into the lower part of our lungs. And sometimes when we start to breathe that way, we might feel the urge to cough. And you should honor that. You should cough. And if you start to cough anything up, you know, just clear your, yourself out. Because sometimes when we don't take those deep breaths, we get a little bit of mucusy stuff collected down near the bottom of our lungs. So when we open it up, it's naturally going to be pushed up again and out. So take those breaths. You can let your eyes come open if you have them closed. And we're going to start to move with our breath. So let's bring our hands up so that they're right about our shoulder and our elbows are close to our body. And gently, we're going to push up the right hand. We're going to push it up toward the ceiling. Nice flat palm. Push up and then exhale, drop it down. Inhale the left hand up. Push it up and exhale it down. And we're going to just rotate from side to side, pushing up the right hand, dropping it down. Inhale up the left hand. Exhale as you drop it down. We're following our breath as we do this. So inhaling as we push up and exhaling as we release it down again. Inhale up, exhale down. We're going to do this a few more times on each side. So just follow nice and slow alternating side to side, following your breath. And we'll do it once more on each side, pushing up the right hand, relaxing it down, pushing up the left hand, and relaxing it down. Keeping your hands about the same place, we're just gonna push the shoulder blades back toward each other, feeling a little bit of a stretch in the front of the chest, and then we're going to crunch it in. Inhale, open up. Exhale, bring your palms together, crunch in. Inhale, open up. Exhale, crunch in. Two more times. Inhale, open up. Exhale, push it together. Once more, inhale, open up. Exhale, push your palms together and release. Let's lift those shoulders up and just roll them around a little bit just to loosen them back up again. And then we'll stop and let's go the other way, rolling them inward this time. and then come back to stillness. We're gonna follow our breath now and inhale the arms, reaching up as high as we can. And if your fingertips can't touch, that's okay. Just bring your arms up as high as you can today. And then on the exhale, we're going to drop one hand down and we're gonna take a nice side stretch. Reach, reach, reach. Push into your palm and try to push your left bottom cheek into the floor. Nice big stretch. You're gonna feel it up the side of your body. Inhale, slowly bring your hand back up. Exhale, drop your left hand down and take a side stretch, pushing your right bottom cheek down this time. Inhale that arm up. Let's do that once more on each side. Stretch to the right. Inhale up. Exhale the left hand down, stretch to the left. Inhale that arm up. And this time as we exhale, we're just going to take our right hand, we're going to bring it behind us. We're going to take our left hand, we're going to bring it down to our lap. Reaching for our right leg. And we're just gently going to start to push the right shoulder back, lengthening up through the rib cage. So lift up, sit up nice and straight, and just gently, gently, gently push that right shoulder back. And if your chin allows, you're going to look toward your shoulder. Just breathe here, don't hold your breath. And gently come back to center. Inhale, reaching up. 
exhale. This time we drop the left hand behind us, bring our right hand down to our lap, pushing our left shoulder back gently as we straighten up our spine. And your chin can turn toward that shoulder if, it'll, if it's able to. If you're not able to turn your neck very far, just go as far as you can. Take a breath or two here, nice and straight, and then slowly come back to center. Let's inhale up again, this time dropping the right hand behind us, bringing the left hand down to our lap, and we're turning at the shoulders, so we're not moving anything down here very much. Very little movement down in the hip area. We're just pushing that right shoulder back as far as we can, and then looking in that direction. Slowly come back to center, inhale the arms up, exhale, drop the left hand behind, right hand to your lap on the left leg, and pushing the left shoulder back, looking in that direction if we can. And slowly, slowly come back to center. We're just going to switch our legs up. So whatever leg you have in the front, you're going to take it toward the back, and the one that's in the back, you're going to bring it toward the front. We're just giving our hips a little break here by switching them up. Let's inhale the arms up, reach, 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 reach. And this time on the exhale, we're going to take a bow. So we're going to start to tip forward, bringing our belly down toward our legs. So if you need to, you can reach down right away. You can just use your hands to help guide you down and start walking your fingers away from you, bringing your belly lower and lower down toward the floor. Staying on your fingertips if you can. Stretch your arms up. Really reaching for that end of your mat. Stretch out. Do you feel a nice stretch in your back? Then we're gonna take an inhale. On our exhale, we're just going to push our belly down just a tiny bit more. So even if you're not looking like me, even if you're way out here, you can still do the same thing. Even if you're way out here, you can still do the same thing. It's all the same. It's just a matter of just tipping into between your knees. Once we're nicely stretched out, you're going to start to gently move your fingers over toward the right, bringing your chest toward your right knee as far as you can this direction. So you want to make sure you keep your bottom planted down and you're not lifting up your, your bum to do this. So you're just going as far as you can. And if you can only go a few inches and you feel what you're doing, you're doing it. That's fine. We're just going for that stretch that we can feel from our hip and up our back, gentle stretching. And then slowly, slowly, let's move ourselves all the way as far as we can toward the left knee till we feel a stretch. And don't forget to breathe here. Take those deep breaths. And then slowly come back to center, stretch out, reach out as far as you can. Take another inhale, and on the exhale, see if you can push your belly down just a little bit more, and then curl your chin into your chest. Walk your hands back towards your body, bringing yourself upright again. It's important whenever we're doing some kind of a back stretch that we're using the arms to help lift us up because our back is slightly compromised by the stretch. We don't want to pull or injure anything. So whenever you're doing forward motions or side motions by stretching your back, make sure you use your arms to push you back up again, not your back muscles. Let's inhale up again. This time on the exhale, we're going to bring our hands behind us and we're going to bring them as close as we can get them to, to each other. If you can bring your hands right beside each other, that's fine. But if you can't, just bring them as close to each other as you can. You want to squeeze those shoulder blades together, sitting up nice and straight, lift up your rib cage. We're going to push our fingertips or our knuckles down into the floor as we lift up our chest. So lift up your ribs, lift up your chest, push, push, push down into the floor. Keep your bottom touching though. And then inhale, lift your chin up toward the ceiling. Exhale your head back and lift your chin up a little higher if you can and let it point upward. 
You're going to feel stretching right up your neck and then keep pushing into the floor and release. Inhale the arms up. Bring your palms together if you can. If you can't, start bringing your hands down until you can get your, palm, your fingers to touch. So if you can reach up here and bring palms together, great. If not, bring them down till you can. And then we're pushing down. So really push down, push down, push down, push. Palms are together. And if you can't quite get those hands flat, just keep pushing the hands in the direction of each other. Come down, come down until you get to about the middle of your chest. And we're going to sit here for just another moment, breathing, close your eyes if you like. And I want you to feel what the sensations are going through your body. What do you feel right now? And you can shake out your wrists. We're going to come into the half butterfly. So we're going to extend out our right leg and bring the other one in toward our body. So again, you might be here. You might be here. You might be here closer to the groin area. Your knee might be way up in the air because your hip isn't opening, but that's okay. All of those are okay. As long as you're feeling something happening in this leg, some stretching going on around the above or below the knee. The only thing I want to ask you to do is not to press your heel of your foot into your knee joint. You either have to be below the knee or above the knee. So bringing this leg in as close to the body as you can, extending out the right leg. And you can point your toe or you can lift your toes up. And this will activate the hamstring. So even if you do that right now, you point your toe out, you feel a sensation, not too much. But as you lift your toes up toward the ceiling, you'll feel that stretching going on in the back of your leg. In any case, you can have someplace in between. We're going to inhale, reach up. On the exhale, we're just going to bring our belly down. And that's all we're focusing on is trying to get our belly to touch down onto our leg. And I'm just going to come off my cushion now. You can too, if you like. Sometimes in this particular stretch, being a little flatter on the floor, that should go deeper. So just bringing the belly down. Keep your head up. Don't think about bringing your head down. And just walking the hands away from you so that you can come into a little bit deeper stretch. So if there's too much tension going on in the back of your leg, just point your foot forward. It'll take it off. If there's nothing going on, point your toe up to help activate the hamstring. Take a deep breath in, exhale, just relax down a little more. We're gonna push into the floor. We're just gonna push gently and bring ourselves up about an inch. Inhale up, exhale, relax back down again. Let's push into the floor just an inch, come up an inch and exhale, relax back down again. One more time, pushing, coming up only about an inch higher. Exhale, oh, relax back down again. And we're just going to breathe here for a second. Breathe, take those deep breaths, feel the sensations in your leg, in your hip. And then using your hands, push into the floor, come back up again. And shake that leg out and let's switch legs. So each side is a little bit different. This leg may have better flexibility. It may have less flexibility. It all depends on the side of your body that's feeling like working today. So the same thing applies. Pointing the toe will lessen the hamstring stretch. Lifting up the toes will increase it. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bring your belly down. Reach down for the floor. Find your first stopping point. Settle here, take a few more breaths. Let yourself relax down. Maybe you'll come down just a little more. And play around with your toes, feeling the stretch in the back of the leg. We're gonna push into the floor and come up only about an inch. Inhale up, exhale, relax back down again. Push into the floor, inhale up an inch. Exhale, relax back down again. 
Once more, push into the floor, inhale up an inch. Exhale, relax back down and just stay wherever you land and breathe here. Just feel what you're feeling. And then we're going to push gently into the floor, lifting our body weight back up. Shake out that leg. And then we're going to stretch both legs out. So here we're going to try to keep a little bit of a knee bend. So if you've got a pillow or a blanket handy, or maybe the one you were sitting on, you can just shove it underneath your thighs. You can also use a block if you like. Blocks are not quite as comfy as cushiony things are, but you can certainly shove the block underneath your thighs as well. What you want is you want a bent knee position. So this particular stretch is for your back. We're taking the hamstrings out so that you can try to go just a little bit deeper than you could if you were activating the hamstrings. So let's inhale, nice big stretch, reach up. And on your exhale, just like before, push your belly down, keep your head up. And we're trying to make contact with our lap if we can. And then you're going to reach down and try to grab your legs. You can grab your shins, you can grab your ankles. If you're able to get deep enough, you could grab your big toes or the bottom of your feet. But wherever you are, you're just going to stay here for a few breaths. You should be feeling the stretch coming up your back from the low part of the back up to the rib cage. Let's take a deep inhale. Inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to try to push down a little more. And grab your ankles or your shins or your feet to see if you can use them for leverage to pull you in just a little more. Let's take another deep breath in. And on your exhale, see if you can relax down into it just a little more. Remember, don't go for pain. We're just going for that lovely stretch. If you feel any pain in your back, immediately stop, back it up a bit. Just breathe here. Use your hands, push into the floor, bring you back upright again, and take your cushion away. Shake your legs out. We're going to come into what's called cobbler pose. But before we do that, we're just going to do a little bit of a of a little bit of a exercise with the hip joint to get some fluid in there. So let's lean back on our hands. Separate your feet so that you won't plunk your toes together. And then we're going to windshield wiper our feet from one side to the other. So this action should be coming from right up into the hip, so it's not involving your ankle. We're just rolling on our heel, side to side. And depending on how your hips are feeling today, you may get a lot of movement, you might not get very much movement. <clears throat> but the whole key is to get the movement started. So we're just getting that movement going. Rolling back and forth on our heel, seeing how deep we can push the toes from one side to the other. And then come to stillness. And now we're going to try to turn the toes in and then turn the toes out. So we're not using our knee joint here. We're keeping our leg fairly stable. It's all coming from the top of our hip. So you may not get anywhere near the same amount of uh, action happening as you see me doing. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is that this internal rotation is very easy for some people and not so much for others. For me, this is probably as far as I could ever go. But however, on this way, I can pretty much almost put my feet down on the floor. And some people are really good at doing this way and some people not so much. And that's got to do with the joint itself. So don't ever force anything. Just get it moving back and forth. Shake out your legs. Now we're going to bring our feet together and we're coming into what's called cobbler pose. So cobbler pose is not butterfly. The difference is, is that we're going to put a heel of our hand close to our body and we're going to make sure our heel of our feet are close to the fingertips and no closer. So you can have them farther away, that's perfectly fine, but don't go any closer than that handprint 
that you have between your body and your heels. The reason for that is, is that we're leaving that space for us to fold down and bring our belly down toward the floor. Now in this pose, you might look like this, but keep in mind, as long as you're feeling that stretching happening in your hip joint, you're fine. It's just a matter of just bringing your belly down between the legs in this fashion. And the other thing you can do in cobbler is you can open your feet up. When you start to try to open your feet apart like a book, you'll feel other things stretching in the top of your thigh. So we're rotating a different set of muscles. When we do this, we're engaging the hip joint in a different way. So if that feels too intense or too painful, just keep your feet together. Straighten up your body, lengthen up through the spine, tipping forward just a little bit before we come down. Keep your head up and push your belly down toward the floor. If you can get your elbows outside of your legs, it will help you to get a little leverage to come down. But otherwise, just let the body weight start to drop down between the legs, keeping our head up. What happens if we drop our head down, we might think we're a lot closer to the floor than we actually are. And what I want you to focus on is trying to get your belly down onto the floor. Yeah, I know it might be very far away, but it's all about the intention. So just keep relaxing down, relaxing down. Take an inhale and come up about an inch. Exhale, push down. Inhale up again about an inch. Exhale, push down. Once more, inhale up about an inch. Exhale and relax down. And just let yourself relax now and breathe. And have a look at your feet. And imagine, maybe one day I might be able to put my face there. But not today. Then that's okay. Push into your hands. Come back upright. Help your knees up. Stretch your legs out. Shake them out. And we're going to come over onto our hands and knees. So if you have really um, sensitive knees, you might want to get a cushion to kneel on. Or... Um, you can also roll up a blanket. You can use a lot of things. You can roll up the end of your mat till you're just kneeling on it. But make sure your knees are comfortable. We're going to come up onto our knees and we're going to bring our hands behind our back and we're going to press them in to the low part of our back. So our fingertips are touching just above our bum cheeks. Going to take our elbows and we're going to push, 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 push our elbows toward each other. Staying in this position, you're going to then lift up your chin and drop your head back and keep pushing those elbows back toward each other and gently pushing your hips slightly forward. Come back upright again. Take an inhale, inhale, lift up your chin. Exhale your head back, push your hips forward, pull those elbows in toward each other. Lots of stuff going on. And exhale, release. Shake out your wrists. And we're going to come down onto all fours. So coming down onto the floor, place your hands under your shoulders, place your knees under your hips, and make sure you can put your fist down between your knees so that your legs are not close together. Your feet can be flat on the floor or they can be tucked if that feels better for your ankles. When I first started, I had to have my feet like this. My ankles were way too stiff to be able to flatten out. So do what you have to do. Take an inhale and on your inhale, lift your tailbone up to the ceiling, lift your chin up. And we're making just a little bit of a sway in our back. Just go as far as your back lets you. And then as you exhale, we're going to tuck our tailbone and we're going to tuck our chin. Push all the air out. Push against your hands. Pull your belly button up. Inhale. Lift your tailbone. Lift your chin. Exhale. Tuck your tailbone. Pull your belly button up. Tuck your chin. Inhale the cow. Lift your tailbone. Lift your chin. 
Exhaling to cat, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin, pull your belly button up. Let's do a couple more of those, just follow your breath. Inhale up, exhale, push it out, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin. Inhale, lift the tailbone, lift the chin. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin. And come back to your flat back. So we're gonna come into some balancing. This is called a cat stretch. So we're gonna be using opposite hand and leg as we go into the stretch. What you should do is you should stare ahead of your mat on the floor, find a spot to stare at, and just tighten up everything in your belly to help you balance. So we're gonna lift up our right hand and then we're going to lift up our left leg and we're going to stretch. Push your heel away, push your palm away. Nice, big, long stretch. We're not going for lifting our leg up above our hip. We're keeping the leg straight out, palm straight out, and then drop it down. Switch sides. This time the left hand and the right leg. So push your right heel back, push your left palm forward, tighten your belly up. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Exhale, drop it down. Let's switch sides again. Right hand, left leg, nice big stretch. Stretch it out, find your balance. If you feel like you're tipping, just stare ahead at something on the floor and relax. Left hand, right leg, one more stretch. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Really reach out, reach out with your palm, reach out with your leg. This will help you tighten up your belly and drop it down. We're gonna come into child pose. So what I'd like you to try to do is open up your knees as wide as your mat. So opening up as wide as you can and then pushing your bottom back toward your heels. So I know a lot of you have issues with your knee joints. It doesn't allow you to compress your legs together. So this is where we have blocks, we have blankets, we have pillows. And if you don't have any of that, I want you only to push yourself back until you start to feel that beautiful achy stretching going on. That's all you have to do. Your bottom does not have to be touching your heels if you're feeling your back stretching already and your legs stretching. So, looking at it from the sideways view, if this is you, and you start to bring your head down and you can feel all kinds of stretching going on, just support yourself here. This is your child pose. For some of you, you can push this part back, but when you start to bring your head down, your bum comes with you up into the air. You need to instead grab a block or something or stack your hands up and rest your forehead down without lifting the bum back up again. With wide leg child pose, just like before, we let our belly hang down between our legs. And if you can get all the way down and stretch your arms out and let your head touch, keep your heels and bottom together, fantastic. If not, find where you are in between all that. And take a few deep breaths here. This is a very lovely resting pose. It's a de-stressing pose. And then slowly let's come back up onto our hands and knees. And we're gonna come into one of the postures that a lot of people don't like. I know I never liked it when I started yoga. It's called the downward facing dog. So I'm gonna give you a couple of alternatives in case down dog just is not in your ability today. The first one is called down puppy. So in down, <coughs> sorry, down puppy, we have our knees together, we have our bottom in the air, and our head comes down toward the floor. Down puppy. The second alternative is called dolphin pose. Elbows are resting on the floor, forearms are resting on the floor. You can lace your fingers together, you can have your hands flat, you can have your elbows as far apart as feels comfortable. Lift your hips up into the air, let your head dangle down toward the floor. Dolphin pose. This one is a good one if you have poor 
uh, ability in your wrist to hold your body up or your shoulders. Otherwise, for those of you who want to try down dog, we're just going to bring our hands in a position where they're slightly turned toward each other, opening up our arms out to the side. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, push against your palms, let your head dangle between your arms. And whether or not your heels hit the floor is irrelevant. You can bend your knees here, you can straighten them out. And you're just going to wag your tail up in the air for a few breaths. And then we're going to drop down and we're going to push back into regular child pose. Toes touching, knees touching, push back, push back as far as you can. And then once you hit the place where you have to stop, then you bring your head toward the floor, but keep pushing back, keep pushing against your hands until you, you can't go any further. Inhale, let's come back up into our down dog or our alternative we went into. Take a few more breaths here. Drop to your knees, push back into your child pose. Inhale back up, coming one more time up into downward facing dog. And drop to your knees, push back into child pose for a couple of breaths or wide leg if you prefer. And then we're going to flip over onto our bottom, coming down onto our back nice and gently. So before you come down though, I want you to see if you've got a block, uh, grab it. If you have uh, no block, but you had a couple of books handy that you would use in place of a block, get those handy. If you have um, no block, no books, but you've got a cushion or a blanket that you can fold up and make a little pad, grab, grab that too. Okay? So the other thing you can have is you can have uh, a low cushion or a roll folded blanket for your head when you come down to make it more comfortable. Come down onto your back, bring your knees up. And we're just going to roll gently side to side on our back, helping our back to relax down and flatten down. And you could do circles if you like. Maybe circles feel better. Going one way for a little bit and then stop and then go the other way in a circle. And then we're going to drop our feet to the floor and we're going to grab that block or blankets or whatever we're going to use to substitute. Get your heels as close to your bottom as you can and push up. And we're going to only use the flat side of the block. It's only a couple of inches high, so you don't want to be more than a few inches high. And we're going to place that between our hip bones, not on your spine. Don't put this on your spine. Make sure you can put your hand underneath your back and there's lots of space there between you and the floor. Instead, make sure that this block is more on your bottom area between your hips and that nice flat place. We call it the sacrum. And it's quite comfortable there, so you'll know. Let your shoulders relax back. And if this feels like quite enough for you today, put your arms up to the side and the T if you like. You could stay right here. Sometimes when people are on this angle, especially if they haven't eaten, uh, they might feel a little nauseated. So just keep that in mind. So just take a few deep breaths, it'll pass. For those of you that would feel like mm, maybe you could do a little bit more, you could take your arms and you can just relax them back behind you and let them lay on the floor behind you. Stretching out a little bit more. You'll feel a little stretch here and you might feel your back um, bend just a tiny bit more, arch a bit more. And if that feels very fine, you could, you could do that. The next thing you could do is you could start to slide your feet away from you, straightening out your legs. Stop when you find that the front of your hip is finding a stretchy sensation getting a little uncomfortable. Otherwise, just keep going until you're completely stretched out and resting on your heels. 
So take a few breaths here, inhaling nice and slow and deep. Pushing your belly out. And on the exhale, push it in. Push your navel up toward your rib cage. Inhale. Push your belly out. Exhale. Pull your belly in and up. Keep taking nice slow breaths here. And then if you have your legs stretched out, you can start to slide them back so your heels are coming back toward the block. And if you have your arms behind you, you can bring them out and lay them out into a T-shape now so that your arms are extended out to the sides. And then gently lift your feet up and push your heels toward the ceiling. And just breathe. You can play around with your feet if you like. Point your toes, alternating heel and toe. And, or you could do circles, drawing little circles with your feet up in the air. Or maybe you feel like relaxing and opening up wide. Now, if that happens and you get stuck out here, just take your hands, push it back up again. Doing a few wide leg crossovers even. This part is purely up to you. You can just have your legs dangling up in the air doing absolutely nothing. One of the things you might find is you might find that you get this crippy crawly sensation up your legs. That's just your circulation changing direction. And your legs aren't used to having the circulation going that way, so it gives it a weird sensation sometimes. This is fantastic, by the way, if you have or are developing varicose veins. I have varicose veins from both my job I was in and childbirth. So they're there. There's not much I can do about them at this point. So just giving my legs a break from having to deal with the circulation being always in the downward direction on my legs. It's good to do this every day. We're going to drop our feet down nice and slow, bring them down slowly to the ground. Make sure you're grounded down, your feet are planted before you lift your back up. Now you're only going to lift your back up just enough to slide the stuff out, not too high. Get that over out of your way. And then very gently, Bring your back down to the floor. It's gonna feel weird, especially if you're on a block. You're gonna feel kind of strange. So widen out your feet, just like on either side of your mat. And we're going to windshield wiper, this time our knees from one side to the other. Just dropping them to the left and then to the right. Slowly side to side. until you start to feel your back totally relaxed down. And then come to stillness. Bring your feet together again. Bring your knees up into your chest. Roll onto your left hip. Let your knees drop over to the left. But do your best to try to keep your shoulders touching the floor. You can look to the right. That will help. Take a few breaths here. Bring your knees up again. Rock on your back if you like before you tip over to the right this time, dropping over onto the right hip. Let your knees come down and look to the left. Somehow, for some reason, by looking the opposite direction, it helps your shoulders stay in contact with the floor. And you notice I've got a space here. Don't worry about it if you do too. This has got more to do with the way my hip joint is configured than anything else. I could really push and push and push and push this to get them to touch, but that's not what we're about right now. We're just about relaxing out here and breathe. And if this feels like too much strain on your back, you can always put that cushion under here, just helping out. But just relax into it. Just let everything get soft. 
Bring your knees back up. And you can either grab your thighs and squish your knees down toward your chest, grab your shin bones, pull them down, or you can grab your big toes and come into what we call happy baby. This is also known as wind relieving pose. So if you happen to let some gas pass, that's all good. Don't worry about it. You can even try once you're here to see if you can straighten your legs out. Coming into yogi toe grip, extension, straightening out the legs. And then relax everything down for your Shavasana. Shavasana is one of the most important parts of our yoga practice. A lot of people don't relax into Shavasana. They get all tense now. They all start thinking about what they're supposed to do today. But instead, I want you to embrace Shavasana. Grab your blanket if you've got a blanket handy and throw it over you to keep you warm. And look at it like an opportunity, an opportunity just to be quiet and calm for a few more breaths. While your body does what it needs to do, it's helping the circulation that you've just invoked to do the healing process inside you. So we're not asking our bodies to do anything but relax now. So let your shoulders relax. And let your arms just drift out to wherever it feels comfortable. Have your palms up so your fingers can relax. Allow yourself to just begin to melt. Let your hips melt. Let your feet melt. Then flop in or out, whatever feels more comfortable. And let your breath relax. You can go back to a little bit more shallow breathing if you like. And if you're feeling tense at all, just take a few deep breaths. Take an inhale in through the nose, push out your belly, but on your exhale, oh, just let it out. Do that a few times each time you feel yourself relax out just a little more. And finally, let your mind relax. Take it to a place that you feel very much at peace, wherever that is. Forest by the ocean, the cottage, or maybe in your room, your favorite room, a cup of tea. And just be there. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, gently waking up your body. And if you like, give yourself a nice long body stretch. Just stretch it out. And then bring your knees up and give yourself a nice hug. Just hug yourself. And take a moment to thank your body. Thank it for everything it does for you every single day. Without complaint, at least not too much complaining. And then gently roll over to one side. Doesn't matter which side you roll onto, whatever side feels natural for you. Take a few breaths here. This part is the bliss moment. And this part is where you have no demands. Nobody's asking anything of you. You just have to just, just be here and feel. Just feel what you're feeling. Enjoy it for a few more breaths. 
And then when you're ready and there's no rush, start making your way up to a seated position. Enjoy me easy pose. Now I'd like to close off the class today by chanting one ohm. You don't have to join me if you don't like to, but if you do, don't worry about how you sound. Nobody's really listening anyway. So we're gonna take a breath in first and out, and then we're going to inhale for ohm. So let's inhale, exhale, inhale for ohm. Oh. Rub your hands together until you start to generate some heat, some energy. And as you do this, think of the places inside you that need some of this healing energy. Maybe it's your body, maybe it's your heart, maybe it's your soul. Close your eyes, place your palms over your closed eyes, and as you open them, breathe in. Sending that energy right down to where it needs to go. On your exhale, palms to ceiling, sending energy back out to those that need it in the universe. Let's scoop up a little and bring it back to your heart center. Namaste. So before you go, please say goodbye, or if you have a question, now's the time to ask, and I'll be happy to ask, answer any of your questions before I leave. If you are watching this on the video feed, you can still ask questions. I always check my comments, and I always answer back as soon as I can. So I'm coming over closer to the computer so I can read things. And don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this class. So somebody wrote here, um, F. Whiting said, Sandra, I'm from Fabine, Fabine, oh, Fabine, that's her name, sorry, uh, from Norfolk, UK. Came back too late for me to join, but I'm watching you and learning. Thank you. I love your excellent teaching way. Grateful. Take care. Well, you too, Fabine. And remember, this will be on uh, be uploaded up onto the uh, YouTube site so that you can rewatch it if you missed a lot of it from the very beginning right through. So hopefully, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. But before you go, say goodbye so that uh, until next time. Now, I haven't got on the schedule uh, for December yet to what class I'll be doing live through December. There'll be at least one um, because of the Christmas season. There's only probably going to be one I'll be able to manage to put in, and it'll probably be in a couple of weekends from now. So stay tuned. Uh, if you haven't already, join Facebook, Northern Zen Yoga on Facebook, or um, yeah, or Instagram. I'm also on Instagram. And then I always post a few days ahead of time and sometimes reminders about a week ahead of time that there is a live YouTube class coming up. So that way you'll be able to make sure that you put it on your calendar and don't miss a class. Connie, tomorrow we have Sunday, Sunday Zoom. Connie is one of the members and she's watching today. And if any other members are watching, uh, Sunday we're having a Zoom class, a special Zoom class. We're trying it out on Sundays. So hope you can join me on Sunday, Connie. And thank you to Jerry. Jerry says, thanks for the practice this morning, the gentle practice. And don't forget to Jerry, if you want to join us uh, for Zoom tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., you're welcome to do that. And if you're not a member of Northern Zen Yoga, you can always join and be part of the Zoom experience. It's really fun. You get to talk with me one-on-one -on -one live and the other ladies from all over the world. And you're welcome, Joan. Joan says thank you and that she'll be hopefully joining more of our classes. If anybody out there is not sure that the Zoom experience is for them, if you message me, I will give you a free trial. It will be for a short period of time, of course, but you are welcome to join the Zoom class and see if it's for you. See if the whole experience of being a member of Northern Zen Yoga is something that you would like to be invested in. It will help you to get more practice throughout the week 
And when you have more yoga practice and more variety of yoga classes, you will find that you'll move forward much more quickly in your stretchability. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say or to ask a question? It, always, I'm always open to all kinds of questions and there's never stupid questions. Believe me, there are only things that you think you need to know that you're afraid to ask. So ask away if you can. That means that she did a practice already today, and then she did this one, but part of it only. So, because in the UK, it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so she's had a full day already, and we're just starting ours. So thank you, Fabline. I hope you join us again. And also, I have a few other UK uh, people who are part of um, Northern Zen membership. They get the benefit of the library of classes. There are plus that they're 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If they're available, they can join the 10 a.m. here time for the class live. Oh, Lisa asked a question. Okay, oh, you're right, I missed that because there was a bunch of stuff that came up suddenly. Uh, Lisa wants to know how to, um, okay, she was talking about having the legs up in the air. Um, how to do it to get the most benefit from having the legs up in the air. That's a really excellent question. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it just as we did today, where you just support your back with a block uh, just a few inches up so that you're on a bit of an angle and you have your legs up in the air and your circulation will start to flow in the opposite direction it's used to flowing. That's the one way. The other way is you can get up against a wall and have your legs resting against the wall. And the only reason why we don't do it here is because um, well, I could do it because I've got the wall to do it. I've got walls close to me, but you may not. You may not have the space during the class to be able to put your legs up the wall, or you may have things in the way that would make it interrupted for you to be able to participate quickly. So think about that. If you've got a hallway or you've got um, a room that has a section of wall that you could bring your legs up and rest your legs up against the wall, you could do that. And I would recommend if you, especially if you've got um, that position where you have your legs resting against the wall, that you stay there for at least 15, 20 minutes. Give yourself the time to really allow your legs to get the break they need. When we're doing this in class, we only have a few moments to be able to, to take the benefit of it. But if you, um, if you use a wall, you can definitely stay there quite comfortably for 15 or 20 minutes. Some people like to put a cushion under their bottom or the back, the low back that's touching the floor, you should be very comfortable on that floor. If you have to put down a mat and some blankets to make it more cushy for your back, do it, whatever you need to do. But definitely, if you can get that routine into your day, or at least several times a week, you'll help your legs quite a bit. 20 minutes, yeah, Lisa. Try to go, fifth, you know, you can start off with 10 and then try 15. You need to uh, remember that your body has got to get used to the idea of circulation flowing in the opposite direction, but it's really quite relaxing. It's actually a beautiful way to do Shavasana to, with legs up the wall. And I wish we had the situation here that everybody had a blank wall in their space that they're doing their yoga practice. So I could just say, let's throw our legs up the wall, but we don't. Fabienne says she is um, French and she is 65 and she, like all of us at our age, need to be stretching all the time. The more you stretch, the, the more you can stretch. If I notice now that if I miss a few days or we go on a holiday and I don't get much yoga into my week, um, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm starting to stiffen up. So keep that in mind. Keep it going. And and bonjour Fabienne, ça va? The other thing too is you'll often see me drinking a cup of tea or some water during a practice. Uh, it's a good idea to keep that handy for you too because if you get thirsty, you need to take a drink. So, 
It's 11 o'clock now and I need to get going because I have, I have to take my grandkids to see Santa today. It's all to have a fabulous day, great weekend. And those of you that are members of Northern Zen, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and we'll do a lovely practice tomorrow morning as well. So take care everyone. And remember, you can watch this again once it's uploaded to YouTube anytime you feel like it. Bye for now. Love you. Bye-bye.